Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here, catchjitsu.com on YouTube or my website, thecombatsystem.com. And uh, I'm making a video talking about another YouTube video, Crazy Guy Picks a Fight at the Gym. I happened to see this a couple hours ago and I was pretty pissed off to see people praising this behavior and this gym. Um, and I'm going to go pretty hard at the guy, but then I realized I saw one of his videos a month ago that I actually kind of liked. So let's just get into it. I'm used to pissing people off. So crazy guy picks a fight at the gym. And I'm not sure if the guy was really picking a fight. But uh, they claim this guy came in and was a little disruptive in the past. This is at a Krav Maga school. This guy is sitting down. And they say this is for two hours before like the head Krav Maga instructor Mike decides to go hands on and go at the guy. Um, so I wanted to look into the legalities. This was in Tennessee. So I finally found those and what would apply. Um, guys, I've been doing security work almost as long as martial arts. I started martial arts at nine and I've been doing security work off and on since 18 in all kinds of different states. So, um, anyway, this guy, so apparently they say he's being disruptive and he was yelling and stuff, though we don't see any of that in, on video other than he gets up and does some kung fu. Well, maybe they're just jealous that his kung fu looks better than, their fake kung fu looks better than their fake Jewish kung fu. So maybe they're just jealous. Did I just offend anybody? I don't care. Look. We need you to just sit down and not be disruptive. So again, about 10, 15 minutes of him. Look at this guy's kung fu. Look at his balance. So this guy probably, you know, harmless, smoked a doobie, listening to some RZA, watching some Kung Fu theater, some Five Finger Death Punch, something like that. Maybe some Drunken Master did some stuff and I, 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 maybe the guy was really this a threat. I don't know. But point is, all he really did was get up and do that uh, and stuff like that a couple times. Did some squats. And let me see if I can find where he did a hook kick. And he did a hook kick. They said dangerously next to the like Coke, Coke uh, the refrigerator machine. But his hook kick's better than their instructor. So like maybe they're just jealous, yeah? Anyway, I've actually had a situation like this before where someone comes in and you don't know what their intentions are or they're being a little disruptive or whatever. Now... Truth be told, this guy most likely, I do not know, there perhaps is drug use, there perhaps is mental issues. A lot of times those go hand in hand in, in you know, inner cities especially. Um, but anyway, this was handled really, really not good. And you see people that make money from this school affiliations and the instructors and Roy Dean's always already saying uh, something like uh, passionate control or compassionate, compassionate control, bravo. I think that's what he said. Compassionate control, bravo. No, no, bravo. This is not how you handle a situation. You either handle it so good with your verbal de-escalation skills and tactics of keeping distance and things of that nature that the situation never kicks off. Or you handle a situation and you attempt that and at some point you have to go hands-on. I've done this professionally for a very long time. When you go hands-on, you go hands-on and you control the outcome. And Mr. Voidine and others and people at Badmouth Aikido, whatever, that could be just a wrist lock and you take control immediately. Or you put a finger in the throat notch and take them down. Or you go knee on belly, take them right down immediately. Or you chicken win them with a one-handed control hold, a.k.a. choke. But officer states it was a control hold because it was on the arteries, not the throat. You take control of the situation immediately. If you decide to go hands-on, you deal with it, and it's controlled right away. This was not done in a very good fashion. Now, a lot of my issues are probably preconceived notions of my lifetime of experience with the crappiness of Krat Maga instructors out there in, in America. If you want to know my feelings about, oh, I'm sorry, Krav Maga, then watch what martial arts should I do. 
Now, some of the techniques are not bad. It's usually the people performing them that are bad. It's usually their training methods that are shit. So I have some issues with their super deadly techniques. And if it needed to be hands-on, how come it wasn't a kick in the balls and it's done? The guy drops to his knees, you go behind him, and you put the hooks in and you control him. Okay, Mr. Mike here, the guy talking to him now, and I'm assuming that's his girlfriend person, that's the manager, and in her background, we know she also did Kung Fu, so to hear her narrate and kind of act like she's haha funny talking about this guy's air Kung Fu, his Kung Fu is better than their fake Kung Fu. <laughs> He's a third degree black belt, now mind you, this guy's done martial arts, uh, according to his bio, almost as long as me. Um, but I still kind of laugh at third degree black belt, mind you, um, and a purple belt in jujitsu. I don't know if that's what you see in this video or not, but he's better than most in Krav Maga standards, to be fair, Mike, compared to Krav Maga standards, you're better than most I've seen in, in a lot of things, not everything, but in, in a lot of things in your demos, like I've seen, like it's all right. So anyway. He makes a move at the guy. She tries to act like the guy swung at him first. But they were telling him he was trespassing and needed to leave. He was not compliant. So, in my opinion, if you tell someone twice and they're not compliant, third time's hands on. Um, even if the law doesn't state that, I usually get, hey man, you know, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Hey dude, it's trespassing, really. You got to leave right now. Or I'm going to call the cops or I'm going to take you down and arrest you myself for trespassing. Um... So it turns out legally, it looks like Mike was in the right here because it's their private property. Um, whether he's the owner, which I think him and the girl he are, back towards the or... Corner, and then here he goes. He so she the acts corner. like he swings at Mike, but instead, Mike at this point, it seems moves at him yeah, first, and the guy sees the motion and doesn't know if he needs to defend himself, and he pulls his hand back, and Mike still closes at him, but he wasn't dedicated. So if you're closing on the guy initially... Why weren't you dedicated? If the guy was such a threat, you had to close on him and get hands on. Why weren't you dedicated? If it's time to go, it's time to go. He decided to go and play. In my opinion, I'm pissed off at them because this was to make a marketing video. This is for them to market their gym. And really, if you wanted to do things the right way, looking up Tennessee law from what little I can tell, this guy had already at one point said, I accept your challenge, she, she claims. So if he comes up, and comes up to the school, and he's got a bow staff in his hands, and he's doing kung fu in the air, and he says, I accept your challenge. Man, the guy just watched some videos, and he's ready to, like, throw down. Looks like, from what I can see, without reading other statutes hidden in other places, I don't necessarily think it's like Washington Mutual Combat, but for it to be an assault or even to use force against the trespasser, it would have to be not agreed to level of physical contact agreed upon in the first place. It almost sounds like to me, I haven't looked up all statutes, so it was hard to find what I did. Um, it looks like to me that Hedy said, well, are you, you looking for a challenge? We can do some sparring. This guy would have said, yes, I'd love to spar you. What rules? Let's set the rules. And then you say, hey, pal, I don't know you, so I need you to empty out all your pockets. Okay, thank you. Now I need you to lift your shirt up and turn around and show me your socks and make sure that you don't have any weapons on you. Okay, no biting, no eye gouging. You could have done a lot better marketing for your school by, if, if you were kind of planning this, to say, all right, and then you could have thrown down, and I think legally you would have been okay under the auspices of sparring, even if it was bare knuckle. Yes, we agreed to sparring until the other guy tapped out, said mercy, or quit. And as long as you stop when the guy taps out, says mercy, or quit, as long as you didn't violate whatever rules you agreed upon, and probably signed if you were smart, you probably could have had the altercation and possibly just as peacefully taken the guy down and mounted him without either of you actually landing a strike. Um, so he, he takes him down kind of bad, stumbles through the door, apparently hurts his toe, maybe bloody, and they fall outside, and he just mounts them for a very long Lots. time. Single collar tie, tries to foot trip. So yeah, fair use, I'm just using this video a little bit. If you claim on me, then we will have a challenge match problem. So 
don't claim on me because I'm giving advice for other people how not to do stupid things like you did and how you were also not so stupid that you didn't break the law. Because in other states, this could have been breaking the law. Since he kept him mounted, he eventually landed in half guard. Since he eventually kept him mounted for so long, if it was not their property in some states, then it's like, whoa, are you detaining the guy? Are you illegally um, kidnapping the person? If you're detaining them for a long time, like if you just wanted the guy to leave, let him leave. You say, well, I'll, then you got to say, you got to be able to articulate. I didn't let him leave because he already had a staff and I was worried he might have a weapon hidden around the corner or go to a car or a staff place and come back with a weapon. So, and because she says she called the police as soon as he went hands on. Now he chose to go hands on while having a knife on him. Can't necessarily fault him for that, but certainly that's a danger when he didn't have other people involved. So my biggest problem with this whole little grapple fest is that if you decide to go hands-on because you got thought the guy was such a threat that you needed to, that after a couple times asking the guy to leave, he didn't, she claims it was already two hours. Now, did you get all kids out of there? I don't care if there was a testing. If you thought there might be a situation, you should have made all kids exit out the back. And if you didn't, shame on you. Because this guy could have pulled out a gun and shot you all. Almost at any time, including later. Because you didn't handle things the right way. Instead, you were worried about making a video for marketing purposes. All you showed was you have bad jujitsu. Congratulations. Now, did you get lucky and no one got seriously hurt? Yes, but you got lucky and so did everybody else around because this guy could have pulled a weapon at any time. Um, he then mounts him and she says he's grabbing and he is. He could have been grabbing for a weapon or could have been grabbing at his balls, which would have been funny had he really squeezed and twisted on the Krav Maga instructor. That just would have been awesome um, for irony's sake. But... Um, the police should have been called a couple times. Now, even in his videos, you see that maybe the Krav Maga Association teaches you to get a key lock with the head in. Though in a demo, he then slips the elbow over the head with the top wrist lock, key lock, um, to get the tap. So maybe they do it as a control position, but if you're going to do it as a control position, how about getting someone like me to teach you right so you could have had your hand up in the armpit and ha had a you know possible neck crank on the guy while controlling the arm? Why weren't you controlling both, both arms? Why didn't you go to mono plata mat so you couldn't get bitten? And so you control both arms because if, if he had a weapon and had intentions, which I don't think the guy really did because he didn't swing even when he closed. Um... The guy wanted to test his Kung Fu and was out of his mind and whatever, you know. Um, but he still is not really hitting on bottom and he's not really, but he could have. I mean, he could have switched at any moment. You decided to go hands on. You don't know. He could have also pulled out a little 380 and shot all these people standing there like idiots. If you decided to go hands on and I saw your excuse online, oh, because there was some blood on the ground from his toe. No, you decide to go hands on and you go three on one and you turn him, you get control of his arms, and you turn him face down. Whether you mount him right away, you get, you underhook that arm, and you drag him. Look at my knee on belly, the beginning of my knee on belly um, seminar. My knee ride seminar. And you drag him to the front, you control the weapons hands at all times. This was sloppy, this is bullshit, and you're marketing like this is good, Krav, crap. This sucks and could get people killed. Could have gotten him killed, could have gotten all these people around killed, could have gotten innocent students of yours Killed had he just pulled out a gun or had he then left after the cop idiot didn't do anything. He, a lot of these street people have stashes in their area of opportunity and then he would have gotten his gun or his knife or his machete and come back. And he did come back and he could have had a weapon then, which you don't know. So at any point, this could have turned deadly threat. If he was enough of a threat for you to justify making the initial contact on him, which legally... Yes, it looks like he would be okay to do, and I don't see anything else in the statutes. Again, a long detainment like that, that's not necessarily awesome unless you call the cops immediately, and it's more defensible if it was your property. So Tennessee Statute 39-11-614, Protection of Property. A person in lawful possession of real or personal property is justified in threatening or using force against another when, and to the degree, it is reasonably believed the force is immediately necessary to prevent or terminate the other's trespass on the land or unlawful interference 
with the property. Now, it looks like this guy was definitely guilty if you told him a couple times and he didn't of at least class C misdemeanor trespassing and possibly class B if you said if I felt like there was a threat to other people there. So it could have been a class C or maybe a class B, but still only a misdemeanor on his part. Now, um, a horribly untrained, unprofessional cop shows up and she did all of next to nothing. Um, she didn't know how to control his arms, how to handcuff him. She didn't take uh, good control of this situation. Um, she should have been telling him to turn into his belly, get his arms on him, helped him control the arms, and got him handcuffed. If you are a cop, train jiu-jitsu. Um, also, why was he not arrested? Why were neither of them arrested? Did she look at it as mutual combat because no one was strike? Yes, yeah, she was probably lazy and goes, well, okay, it was mutual. And they just grappled on the grounds like little boys. And, well, no one's really that injured other than a little bleeding toe. So, um, but considering they're claiming he has a rap sheet including felonies, the guy should have been arrested unless the system's so bad in that area, which they are in a lot of cities, and he's a 5150 metal case, and so she has to go, well, can I get him the intake tonight? And, oh, they're already crowded. Well, what do we do? Well, this is America, so, you know, the politicians import all the, dr import all the drugs, and then they send them to doctors that sell all the drugs. So either way, they got him on illegal and illegal drugs, which I've dealt with as a uniformed security licensed uh, security guard before at a place known for its meth and heroin use. So I have dealt with this. Um, if you're gonna go hands-on, you needed to control the arms and control the situation. Or me, I just have the skills where I would have controlled him right away. And he's either choked out, controlled, in a wrist lock, his arms behind him, I turn him, I get him, and he's stuffed. And I got him face down in a double knee ride. Or I'm in a double knee ride where mono plot them out. If I can't, I'm not in a mount where I only control one arm. The other one could have been stabbing me, reaching for a gun. You saw it many times. You could have pulled a weapon or um, could have been biting you. So even Roy Dean's probably going to get mad at this, but his instructor looked at my mono plot to mount stuff and was probably teaching that in law enforcement without giving me credit. I don't care because, quite frankly, I wanted it out there and I saw that he did law enforcement seminars more than I do. So, um... Go ahead and, you know, make of that what you will. Um, I noticed that this guy uh, had a video that I kind of liked. I saw a month ago. Now, I'm not saying I liked all the techniques or whatever. But look at this technique here in a minute. Or right here. And I'll try to play it back. I think it was... I don't know. I think I have the timing on it. Fair use, fair use, fair use. Uh, maybe I lost it. She she goes in on him for a clinch, and he grabs her head, and you can see he did my head twist. Now, gee, Krav Maga Alliance is the best part of your curriculum. Where did you learn that? Did you not get that from Dan the Wolfman saying, when are UFC fighters going to use my anti-cage tactics or watch my whole seminar hour video on biomechanics or even my early 2012 video, uh, highlight video on best MMA and combatives techniques? Because it kind of looks like that. Also, all his case of Gatami escapes later in this very video. Um, sure look like, you know, I kind of have the most popular case of Gatami videos. So, um, sure looks like maybe some of their stuff is kind of like me. But you have to perform well. Like, some of his stuff is good. He's got a good left punch. He's got a good left kick. He has shitty right punches. I don't know. It might be from an injury when he was jacked when he was younger. Um... His combinations also suck where only one out of three or four punches has power. That is a pet peeve of mine. They all should have power unless you're really skilled and then you go bop, 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 and you're changing rhythm. But that's not it. When you go da, 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 and only one has power, that sucks. So, Mike might not be a bad guy. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. But to use this as a marketing thing to act like your stuff is so awesome, no. If you wanted to use it as that, then man up and say this, hey, oh, you accept my challenge? Did you want to spar, sir? Because it looks like in Tennessee you could do that if you agree to the rules and no one broke them. If someone breaks them or they say stop and then you continue hitting them like some asshole MMA fighters have done when people have already basically been knocked out on their feet. You pussies to beat up a nobody or kung fu guy that you tricked into doing a fight. You big ass pussy 
Yeah, I'll, I'm going to start fucking up all you people. I'm sick of some of you people. Um, old school way. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. I'm, I'm give the guy a beat down, slap him in the face a few times, humiliate him, maybe make him bloody. And some of the people that really challenged me online, I'd headbutt you into oblivion and stop when I felt like it. But just a crazy guy off the street or a kung fu guy that wants to challenge whatever, there's no reason a soccer kick his head off on the ground. If you already mounted him and pounded his face in and then slapped him a bit and let some spit go on him and big brother the guy and humiliate him and hey, you signed your rights away, you can't sue me, and now I have the right to the footage, well, okay. That could have probably been better in this situation. Um, the guy came back to a store next door and one of the workers yelled and called them in. Let me just go to kind of show you what this was like. Okay, so here now the guy is in a jacket, and there's Mike, and there's a girl, and there's another girl that looks like she wants to fight him. Apparently they say he assaulted a girl, and if he, like, smacked a young girl on the ass or something, I would have already snuck up behind him and choked this guy out. Why? Because I already had the cops come once. They didn't do anything, though he already trespassed you already broke one law and if i had at least two witnesses saying yeah he grabbed that girl if i find out he assaulted someone else i'm arresting him in most states you can arrest people as a civ civilian you don't have to be law enforcement i'm making the arrest whether you have to sign paperwork when the cops show up whatever it's different each state whether the cops takes over or misdemeanors in some states but if you're claiming it's a felony then you have to do it and then there's some liability on you it depends but had that been true this guy would already be down and out i would have controlled the situation again he might have been coming back to start trouble to get mike to show up and then start shooting mike and meanwhile three innocent women could have gotten hit in the crossfire if you have a gym don't tell me crop my god deadly people in tennessee don't have a gun or know someone in two hours that they can call to go to their car to get a gun do you point it at the guy? No, depending on the brandishing in each state. But if you thought it was getting the hands on, I go, sir, I'm really at telling you now, you have to leave. We have already called the police. She's calling the police. Sir, you need to go now. He's going to fuck you, I'll kill you, whatever. You then take off your outer government garment without threatening them and you expose your firearm that you're legal to do in almost all states in a place of business, whether open carry is legal or not. So that could have put an end to it right there. Oh, okay, man. Okay, man. I'm leaving. So why wasn't, I don't know if other people were prepared or not, but why wasn't everybody helping? They should have controlled the limbs right away. Why weren't weapons present? Did you get kids out of there? And then you show up later when the guy could have easily gone around the corner in his tin can that's kind of buried behind a bush, and then they get their gun and their knife out. I know what I'm talking about, and you put a lot of people at danger. So if you want to learn about real tactics, not bullshit crime got tactics where you actually don't know how to do anything, and bullshit techniques that you actually don't know how to apply, why don't you train with someone like me that actually knows how to deal with situations and handle them right there and then? So there's my rant. He might not be a bad guy, and I don't know, two hours, but then the way it goes down, it seems like you're like, well, I can handle it, and I'm going to test myself, and it's going to be a marketing thing. Well, if you did that, you put not only your own life, but other people's lives in jeopardy, and that's why I'm pissed. Um, and it's not the right tactics or the techniques. And the key lock with the head in, I don't know what that bullshit is, but fine if you know to slip it off and whatever. But no, the, just, it, you, the guy should have already been taken care of. If he's not face down already, you've done something wrong. Whether face down is from an Ayadori Nikio or face down is because you slip behind him and you chicken wing and one hand choke him at the same time and kick out that knee, like should have been done here. That's the tactic I would have done here. It should have been handled. And at this point, had I had two girls saying, yes, he physically assaulted a girl, he's under my, I probably already would have arrested him, civilian arrest, but I would have done it at this point. Anyway, guys, I'm Dan the Wolfman. Look at CatchYouTube.com. Look at my combative videos. Look at my best self-defense videos. Maybe understand that I have real-world experience fighting multiple opponents, weapons, bouncing for years. I know what I'm talking about. Stay safe. Happy holidays.